and this one is kind of an introduction to infighting with the cane. I like to divide up the use of this cane into three categories. The first category the previous lessons have been covering, and it's kind of like a, what you might call stick fencing, right? It's when we're at this longer range and we're scared, squared off and we're trading blows. Um, defending, parrying, reposting, that back and forth, that stick fencing, like if you were faced off and you had to fight with your stick, okay? Then as we get into a closer range, we're more into, a, into an infighting range where we can do some grappling kind of applications with the stick. And then it kind of changes a little bit. And in the Bartitsu Canon, looking at Pierre Vinet's system, there's, that canon provides us quite a lot on the stick fencing phase, right? When you look at the articles that were published in Constable Lang's book, we've got it fleshed out pretty well. We kind of have a good idea of what they were doing. There's less shown on the infighting phase, although clearly they had an infighting phase because it kind of shows up a little bit in uh, Barton Wright's Pearson articles. But that is much less fleshed out. But a lot of it is pretty common sense. And we know that they, you know, the jujitsu, that turn of the century jujitsu was a big part of Bartitsu. And there's no doubt that when they were working on self defense applications in jujitsu locks and throws and such, Somebody picked up a cane and played with how they would do some of the similar things with a cane. It just never got recorded. So we'll work with that too. Grappling with this cane. How can I do a leverage throw and use my cane at the same time, right? How can somebody, wep weapons retention stuff, somebody grabs my cane and just like they grab my wrist, I can do a twisting motion to break their grip. Well, I can do a twisting motion with the stick, with the cane to break their grip. So we'll explore those applications with the cane as well because I'm quite sure they did that back in the day in Bartitsu. The third category of cane use is what I would call situational defense. And that's where you see a lot of the crook cane stuff used. That's like I'm sitting at the chair, sitting in, at this, the bench in the park and somebody comes up behind me and puts me in a chokehold and how do I respond with my cane? A situation. I'm unawares and somebody grabs my arm and tries to yank me across. How do I respond when I've got my my cane by my side. Those are specific situations. So that's another category. So we've got the stick fencing category, we've got the infighting grappling category, and we've got kind of a situational defense category. That's how I like to divide it up. That's just kind of an intro. Now I've got to admit I have studied some Doyle Irish stick fighting and some of this is going to be very similar to what's done in the Doyle method simply because the Doyle method uses a two-handed grip and a lot of it's done in pretty close. And from there, I mean, there's only so many ways a human can move, so there's going to be very similar things. And so I'm not trying to step on any toes or share any secrets or anything, but just know that a lot of this is so common sense and, and straightforward and a good system that I like to think I would have thought a lot of, thought of a lot of this on my own just by click, picking up the cane in this position and playing with it. All right, so to get started, the basic position where we're going to use this cane for infighting is again what I've talked about in the past is one third grip. Well, I've got the cane roughly divided in, into thirds because this gives me an end to play with, to leverage, and it makes my grip roughly shoulder width, so it's a good, strong position to fight from, okay? The basic positions. We, we've seen in the Bartitsu Cannon the, the rear guard with the cane. And we've also seen in Pearson's articles, I just grab it here. And this is a two-handed rear guard, right? So that's one position, the two-handed rear guard from either side. It's just your rear guard position, I grab it with the lead hand. Simple enough. And this is high. The two-handed rear guard, high. Well, obviously, if I can do it high, I can drop it down, and I can do the two-handed rear guard low. We also see this in the articles. Because Barton Wright shows doing that bayonet thrust to clear a crowd, and he's holding his cane right here. So that's in the it's in the cannon. Now, if we can do a two-handed guard to the rear, we can do a two-handed guard to the front. So if I take my front guard, right, I don't want to stand there like that. So obviously, if I'm going to grab it in the front front guard, I'm going to bring it back here. Two-handed front guard. And again, I can do it high from here, two-handed front guard, or I can do it low. And this two-handed front guard low is basically 
a casual ready position, right? Like I could be in a casual position like this, or maybe I want to be a little bit more prepared because I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Something might happen. So maybe I just kind of casually put my king here so I'm ready to go. Two-handed front guard. See, I already in my one my third my one third grip. And from here, you know, if something was happening, I could step back into guard and respond from longer range, or I could step in and respond at close range. I'm kind of ready for either. So you got a two-handed rear guard, high, two-handed rear guard, low, two-handed front guard, high, two-handed front guard, low. And this is kind of the primary guard in the, the Doyle system, okay? So, advantages and disadvantages. This guard, I would only want to use when I'm advancing on somebody because obviously, I put it out here, my hands are exposed. The whole reason we use the front guard this way is to pull the hand back out of the way so it's not a target. So obviously, if I do a front guard this way, my hands have become targets, okay? When I'm in a, the two-handed, the rear guard, my hand is much less of a target, and now the advantage is I have that point to try to help keep the opponent away from me, right? Like a spear almost, and I've got a narrower target, and even if you consider that hand uh, exposed, I've only got one hand exposed instead of two hands exposed. So there's give-offs, gives and give and takes. The advantage of this position is I'm in a position where I can be advancing on the guy using either end and striking with either hand, right? So this is a good already there in your face position, but I wouldn't face off with a guy this way necessarily when we're using our Berjitsu system. I'd still be facing off this way until I've closed the gap and I've got a reason to be in this position. Okay? So that's the basic positions. Now let's talk about some of the basic motions. I should say the bridge between that longer range stick fencing phase and the infighting phase are the two-handed blocks. Obviously, if I'm here and we all, we've already gone over the blocks, we've got the bodyguard, the flank guard, the head guard. If I'm going to do them two-handed, this one's easy. If I'm doing a, a flank guard here, then I could be bracing it with this hand, right? Again, I'm not grabbing it yet because I don't want my hand to get hit if it glanced off and came down. I'm just bracing it. So even if it glanced off, my hand is not exposed. But once I'm blocked here, then I'm probably stepping in, boom, boom, to that close range position. So it's a bridge. Here's my block into infighting range. Right? Same way, going that way. Again, I don't want to do that. And my hand is exposed. It slides down. So instead, I come across and I block it this way. And see, I've got that ability to kind of pivot and move. So I block this way or maybe even this way. And then, boom, into that, into that range. Boom. Same way with the overhead guard, right? Or the head guard. I come up. I want to make it a two-handed guard, I'm going to do this, right? So I'm not going to get my hand hit. And I'm probably going to peel it this way as I step in now into range. I could also start here and then switch, open this hand, and peel it off this way. But those two-handed blocks are your transition into that infighting range, unless you're just already attacked and he's right on top of you, okay? So one good drill to practice is just opening and closing the hands, right? Just open and close the hands. Because as I do this, I've got to be able to just freely shift which hand is open or closed so I can roll a strike off and not get my hand hit from whatever position, right? So this kind of a drill, just opening and closing the hands is important and part of your kind of stick handling skills, okay? So a couple of things we've already covered for this infighting range is the bayonet thrust, right? And the bayonet thrust can be high or low. If you know anything about using the bayonet, if I'm doing the bayonet thrust low, it's like I was thrusting with the blade on the end of the rifle, right? Boom. I'm not going to turn my hand like this because it's not necessary. I'm just going to hold this way, boom, and hit. Boom. I can hit forward. I can hit back. If I'm here and somebody's all around me, somebody's coming up from behind, I can hit this guy, I can hit this guy, I can turn and hit. You know, there's all kinds of things I can do, but it's that, right? Bam! 
Now if I want to get a little more reach, I can actually open my hand and let the stick slide through. See? It's like a pool cue. Boom! I just open my hand and let it slide across my palm. Right? Now if I thrust, bayonet thrust from above or high line, this is like if I had my rifle and I've turned and I've done a butt stroke downward. Right? I'm hitting with the butt of the rifle downward. In this case it doesn't matter. Just think of it. Thrusting here, thrusting here, I'm coming over the top, coming over the top, coming over the top and hitting this way. Right? I could do both. Bam! Bam! But it's that hit. Hit him in the gut as he doubles over, hit him in the back of the head. Right? Bam, bam. Bayonet thrust. Okay, another one that we did, if you remember, we talked about the in and out drill on a previous lesson, was this motion coming down, which I called the chop or the chopper. It's a chopping down motion. Kind of like the blow in boxing, chopping down. And again, this one comes, I'm opening my hand, and I'm coming straight down. So if I was walking forward with it, I'd be, I grip with this hand, I'm opening this hand, straight down, straight down. It's like I'm chopping down, boom, with that end of the stick. Bam, 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 right, boom. And what, again, it's, it's chopping down. One of the applications is if somebody's got a guard up, is to engage their guard and rip it down, and I can go right into the bayonet thrust. Rip their guard down, bayonet thrust. So I rip their guard down, the bayonet thrust low, then maybe I hit him in the back of the head, but that's thrust high. But this motion, whoom, is yanking something down, clearing the line. Now, if I hit him with the bayonet thrust first, boom, and he bends over in front of me, then that could be a blow to the back of the head, right? Be hitting right to the back of somebody's head. But it's that, boom, a forceful downward strike. Boom, and I've got my hand open, because if he had a, a weapon, and I'm knocking his weapon down, I don't want to smack my hand into his weapon by accident. I don't want to do this kind of thing. So I open my hand. So I'm safe. Boom. 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 All right, so that downward chopping motion will have a lot of applications. And practice that. Stepping forward. Boom. Boom. Stepping back. Boom. 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 And then like we did in the in and out drill, add the bayonet thrust. Boom. Chop down, thrust. Chop down, thrust. Chop down, thrust. Or reverse it. Thrust. Chop down. Thrust. Chop down. Because those will often go together, you know. Thrust and then pow to the back of the head. Okay? Just think of that. Boom. 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 Hit. Okay? Notice this kind of motion. If I bring that motion out and make it in front, it's like this. It's a rowing motion. And I call this one the kayak. Because it's not like a rowboat or a canoe where I'm doing this. It's like I'm paddling on both sides. Right? I'm paddling my kayak. And I can go forward, paddling my kayak forward. Or if I'm about to go over the edge of the falls, I can paddle backwards to back my kayak up. Right? So this can go forwards. Or backwards and this is another good stick handling skill stick and see because see I have to kind of open my grip and roll the cane in my grip see how that works I'm not opening my hands but I'm letting the cane twist in my grip right this motion so this is another stick handling skill to work on so you can see how it comes out I'm doing the chopper boom same kind of motion but really this motion we can use for a lot of things. And we'll do other videos how we're going to apply this. This can be used for weapon retention. This could have been a strike. Boom. 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 Right? A low strike. Pow. Pow. Right? Strikes. The guy's grab hold of my cane. He's trying to yank it out of my hand. This motion could be a boom. A weapon retention motion. The guy has reached towards me, and I've stepped up. I've shot my end of my cane underneath his arm, so my tip is behind his armpit, and then I turn. Phwah! Could be a throw, a leverage throw. A lot of applications for this 
kayaking motion. That's why I want you to show, to show it as a basic drill and to start playing with it. Right? It's a strike to the face, strike to the face, or let's say this is the guy's arm. I'm standing here in my relaxed stance and he's punching at me. He's extending. He's got a weapon in his hand or a punch. And he's just extending his arm. This motion is my basic blocking motion where I deflect it, right? Deflect it. And then I could have hit him. I could deflect it. Bam! You know, any number of motions. I could have I could have turned and deflected it this way. And hit. Right? This kind of thing. That motion is like almost like I'm doing my forearm parry in the in the kickboxing. Right? That can be blocks to various things, okay? In tight. And even if I'm not hitting his arm, again, we'll do this when we show more of the grappling applications, but imagine the guy is extending, he's throwing a punch at me, and I just cat, I intercept it with my stick, and then I'm on the other side of his arm, right? So I've yanked his arm around with the circling motion, and I've stepped in, I hit him with the other end. Catch his punch, hit him, hit him again. So we start to put these together in various ways, right? That rolling motion is an important motion we're going to use for a lot of things, so practice this, okay? And other strikes. Vinay already named this the uppercut, right? So that name's taken. So we can't call this an uppercut, even though it's a lot like doing an uppercut with a punch. So I call this the lift. Bam! So if I didn't have the cane in my hand, it'd be like I was hitting with the back of my fist. Pop! To my shoulder coming up like this. Now I put the cane in my hand and I'm coming up. I'm hitting with the tip. Pow! 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 So obviously that could be the equivalent. Let's get this out of the way. So that could be the equivalent of doing a punch when I'm in close, right? But I'm here, I'm doing it with my cane. Bam! Right? Bam, 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 that upward. And see, by pulling this end up and pushing this end down, I'm really getting a lot of oomph on the end of my punch or the end of my stick, much more so than if I was trying to do it this way, right? This is not going to have quite the effect that this will because this is snapping through. And I'm coming to my shoulder, boom, just so I make sure I get that full carriage. So when I practice it, it comes up like this. Bam! And see, I'm actually kind of reaching forward and bringing it back. So it's a lift. So again, I can think of this as the tip of my cane catching the guy under the chin. Or, if he's got a guard, he's got his hands out there, that could be a lifting action to strike his hand. If his, if his stick is just here and I'm stepping in, that could be a lifting action to blast his stick up out of the way. Right? I blast his stick up out of the way so I can step in with my next blow. Bam, bam. I could come up, bam, and then back down, right? But that's an important motion to lift. Boom, another one to practice for just basic stick handling, and we'll show different applications later. Boom, lift. Now, so if that's like the equivalent of an uppercut, I can do the equivalent of a hook, right? In this position. Again, all this is just common sense, right? I got this cane, I want to hit with the end. Well, I can lift it, I can hit the guy. I can drop it, I can hit the guy. I can thrust it, I can hit the guy. And I can go across to hit the guy. That's just all common sense, right? It's not like any one system has a has a, a, a lock on common sense. Anyway, a cross stick. I'm coming across and I'm hitting. See, I'm trying to keep it more less on a pair, on a level plane, I could go down a little bit because again, a hook could come like this, a hook could arc a little bit, but the important thing is this hand is going forward and this hand is coming back. So I get again that more velocity at the tip. It's not this, it's this. Bam, 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 bam. Just like this, not this, because I want that, that velocity, that snap at the tip. Boom, boom, boom. So this one, the stick handling skill, just to stand in place and pivot. So I'm pulling this one back, shooting that one forward. Boom, 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 boom. 
Boom. So again, it's like I'm hitting them. Bam. 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 Could be at head level, or I could have dropped down and caught him in the ribs. Pop. 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 So, obviously, I can be going side to side. Up to up. Side. Up. Down. Up. Right? So you can start putting these together in combinations, especially if you've got a head, a heavy bag or something to actually hit. Okay? So, let's review just these basic motions. And you got a lot from this, right? You start playing with it. We've got, I can hit him here. High, low, high. Right? That was the first one. I've got chopping down. They can go into any of these strikes. Right? Yanking something down out of the way. Boom. So here's this drill. Then we had the kayak. Just practicing this rolling motion. Forward and back. And you can practice it as a strike. Boom, boom, boom. Bam, bam, bam. And then we had the lift. Comes up this way, this way. And then we had the cross hit. Cross hit. Cross hit. Cross hit. Cross hit. Boom. 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 And then I can just play and then play, take do those basic drills and then play with putting things together. I hit him. I hit him with a bayonet thrust. He bends over. So I catch him with the lift right under the chin. And I step in, hit him with the cross stick. Or I hit him with the bayonet thrust. He bends over. So I turn. I slam him with a, the, the chopper, and I step back and hit him again as I, hit, as I step away. Any number of things we could do, but work on those basic stick motions for the infighting first, and then later lessons will show you how we're going to apply these things, then kind of go into kind of grappling with the cane. All right? Hope that makes sense. Hope